Hi, my name is Shane with Glover Nursery. Today we are going to show you step by step how to build a rock water feature in your yard. Today we were feeling a little lazy, so we did bring the tractor with us. You don't necessarily need one, but if you happen to have one, they're pretty handy. So the first step would be to determine where you want your rock fountain to be. While they're finishing the hole here, I'm going to show you what is included in our rock fountain kits. This one here happens to be a two rock fountain kit. We have them, we have one rock fountain kits available, two rock fountain kits, three rock fountain, fountain kits, and then anything beyond that we can customize for you. In the kit we have everything you need other than the rock itself the drilled rock and the cobblestone. So on a two rock fountain kit, usually it takes about a yard and a half to two yards of cobble to fill the hole. Um, but uh, inside the kit itself, we have the one inch PVC flux pipe. Um, in the two rock kit, we include 12 feet of it. Uh, one rock kit is six feet three rock is 18 so basically we give you about six feet for each rock to work with so the one inch flex pipe the outside diameter is an inch and three eighths which is the size of hole we put in our our fountain rocks so the hose will slide right in nice and snug and you don't need to seal it or attach it to a separate fitting on the rock itself it just slides in nice and tight it makes it really easy. Um, also included in the kit oh, are some instructions, but you won't need these anymore because you'll be able to watch this <laughs> handy video. Yeah, I usually just do this <laughs> with instruction, <laughs> but um, also we have a pre-built manifold for you, so you don't have to glue anything other than the hose itself you will glue with PVC glue included in the kit. Um, it's just like gluing a sprinkler part, just regular old sprinkler glue. That's the only part you're going to need to glue. The other end, you say, just slides right into the rock. Um, on the manifold we have a valve to each line. So again, this is a two rock fountain kit. If you were to get a one rock fountain kit, it would be similar to this other than um, just one valve. So on a three rock kit, you're gonna have three valves. Liner, this is 45 mil EPDM liner. 45 mil is the thickness. Oh, okay. So it's basically industry, it's an industry standard like as far as water features okay. go like mo most most people are this is what they're going to be using okay. if you were to have like a waterfall or a pond put in your yard um this is the material you'd use um there's the pump in the two rock kit we have a 2400 pump 2400 gallon per hour pump um we pretty much figure about 1,200 gallons per hour per rock for the majority of the rocks. If they start getting to be taller or larger rocks, then you know you can upgrade and go a little bit um, bigger on the pump. But we, for most installations, we figure about 1,200 gallons per hour per rock. So our one rock fountain kit would include a 1,200 gallon per hour pump, our two rocks got a 24, and our three rock fountain kit would have a 36. But we do have larger pumps if we were, uh, it, you 12 know, rock fountain. Yeah, if 12 rock fountain <laughs> kit or just a really big rock, we could, we could uh, adjust the pump. This is um, the underlayment which is a geotextile. Uh, this one's an eight ounce. Um, on a 
two rock kits, same size, 10 by 12. Oh, okay. So our 10 by 12 is gonna be able to accommodate a hole that's about five feet wide with our 20 inch depth and then seven feet long. And then this is the pump housing. This is where we will keep our pump and our valves. Um, so after we dig the hole, then we're going to put our fabric down, then our liner, then this goes in. And then inside of this pump housing, I forgot my screwdriver. I do have a quarter. Who needs a screwdriver if you have spare change? Right? I, <laughs> so I always have a quarter in my pocket. Is that? Is that why? Mm hmm <laughs> So, um, as far as setting up the manifold, it's pretty simple. It's all pre-assembled for you which make, takes all the guesswork out. No stress. No then. stress, yep. So it's easier if you detach the coupler from the valves. You don't have to glue that onto the pump, do you? No, this you do not want to glue. That way you can oh. take it apart if you need to. Yeah. So if you ever needed to replace a pump, it's just a 10, 15 minute process as opposed to a whole ordeal, right. which if you do not, you know, install these correctly, it can be a real pain in the butt to get the pump out. Right. Um, but not the way we're showing you. Right? The way we're showing you is easy. So anyway, we can show you this again once we get it into the hole, but basically you just screw the, the manifold onto the pump. You line up the valves to the holes. And then... The hose goes right inside. Okay. There's a hole for the cord. And one of the things the first time I saw the housing, and I know this is silly, but I know people will have questions. All the holes along the side, yeah. the little holes, what are those for? Those are so the water can get enter back into the box. Because I know that's a silly question. When I first saw it, I'm like, why are those those holes? Won't that Cause it, the protection of the pump? No, because no. it looks it's cool. Supposed, <laughs> it's supposed to be there to help the water flow. Yeah. Okay. I am Ben with Glover Nursery. I'm in charge of the installs and deliveries. So we're just kind of showing you how we go about this. So you can have us do it or you can do it yourself. Yeah, we'll come out and do it for you. <laughs> um, so we've got the hole dug. It should be pretty much ready to go, but we want to make sure. So I'm going to take the vault and double check our depth. We just want this to fit just below grade because once everything's in here, we're going to cover it with a couple inches of rock so you won't know it's there. But if you ever need it, you can get at it fairly easily. Just pull the rock aside and you'll be able to get at the pump and the control valves and everything that's in there. So it looks like we're pretty much ready to go. So we'll pull this back out and start putting the underlayment to protect the liner from underneath and then the liner will go on next. Are there any um, tricks that you learned after having installed many of these for this part of the process? Um, like is there a right side up kind of thing? No, there's no right side up. The uh, it always seems to be folded a little bit different every time. So <laughs> you just kind of, if you lay it all out beforehand and then just kind of pull it over the top if you have enough hands, that makes life a little bit easier. But yeah, you just got to kind of get in there and do it and make sure it's, hey, that's pretty good. On the liner, there is a little trick if you put the, um, cut in 
We do roll these up so you can just And the liner is obviously the most important part because not only is it surprisingly the most expensive part, it's also what keeps it from having other, any leaks. And you just kind of got to work it into the area you have make sure it's high enough all the way around which we just barely are and yeah so it's okay if it folds over itself yeah it's fine if it folds over itself it's uh You'll never get it perfectly because you're in a depression. It's never going right. to not have a fold in it somewhere. Um, you just keep in mind that wherever the lowest point of the liner is, is going to be the lowest point that the water sits. Mm. So that's where you'll know when it's full because the water will go over. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to go if you can't say you run into a, an obstruction like a stump or whatever that you don't want to dig out and you don't want to dig the whole, the same depth all the way through. Just make sure where that pump housing is, is at the deepest point. Yeah, you want the pump to sit at the lowest point because that's where the water goes. Down. Water goes down. So the vault sits in here as flush as you can get it and we've got the smaller hole here for the power cord and we've got two holes here for the the flexible pipe i have enough room to turn the pipe out of here without needing any fittings or anything so we should be good to go we also left enough room so that when we put the cover on this we'll be able to put a thin layer of rock on the top so that you'll know it's there but you won't see that it's there and if you ever have to get it you just pull the rock away and everything will be right there accessible different size rocks a lot of times these will help even the water flow and also because it's a T this one is on always going to get a little bit more water so you can kind of close it down to evenly disperse the water or unevenly change the water to go from one rock to the other rock. So that water flow is just like if you, like if you have a rock that's further away, do you have the water flow a little higher? Or it, does all, it, it, it just oh, you it, adjust it, it when you get there. It just depends on site. Oh, okay. So cool. And the gravel's filling up here. fill it up till it overflows and then kind of pay attention to it for the first week or so two weeks three weeks see how long it can go before the volume starts fluctuating coming out of the rock and then you know you need to add water kind of pay attention to how long that's been that way you know every 8 10 12 14 days I need to fill it up 
Because this one is flat on the bottom, we don't need to bury it for stability. So we can pretty much set it on the top of the grade. That way we don't lose any height of the water feature itself. Sometimes when they're columnar or when they don't have a flat bottom, you bury them to create the stability so no kids can come through and knock them over on themselves. So. Because this rock is flat, I've got it kind of propped up on bricks right now so we can get the pipe that Shane is working with there and feed it up into the hole. Because this is two separate rocks, we're going to feed it all the way up until it is through the first one and into the second one, which it is, Shane, you're all good. And yeah, and uh, then we'll feed the other one in. I'm not worried about the hoses yet. We will cover them in the finishing process. Right now we're just trying to get the, get the pipe in the rock, so. Yep, we don't want the water going out between the two rocks and it'll also act as a little bit of a mechanical connection between the two. We almost got her to the point where it's wrapped up. Now we just need to cut off the excess and make it look pretty. So you kind of want to give yourself, you can see where your edge is. You know, you know where it's going down. So you give yourself a little extra. You can use scissors. I just like to use a razor knife. Be careful, don't cut yourself. It can happen. You just go through and leave yourself a little bit extra along the edges so that when you're done, you just kind of roll and bring the rock up to make kind of a hidden clean edge in case it's a little bit you want to have a little bit of room to bring it back up if you need to better to have a little extra than not enough just be careful when you're going around and cutting it you know you have this cord hanging out so you don't want to cut your electric cord just kind of go around it 